Welcome to worship at St. John United Church of Christ. Know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This is a slightly different service. It's a hymn sing Sunday. Hope that you will sing out loud wherever you happen to be. And instead of a sermon, we have a greeting later from our conference minister, Reverend Ginny Brown Daniel. Will you please join me in our call to worship? Let each of us, wherever we are, whether we are familiar with these songs or just learning them, whether our vocal style is that of a lyrical lute or a clinging cymbal, let us sing boldly our praise to you, O God. Let the lyrics wash over us and transform us. May these words be our song of prayer for ourselves, for our community, for our world. Let us sing hymn 656, Open the Eyes of My Heart. First scripture reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 through 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord. Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom 
that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do. Now, therefore, Say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and doing. This is God's word. Let us sing number 343, The Potter's Hand. Hear these words from the Gospel of John, beginning in chapter 1, verse 35. The next day, John the Baptist again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? 
Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. Let us sing together hymn number 589, O Master, Let Me Walk With Thee, verses 1 and 4. St. John, United Church of Christ, St. Charles, I bring you greetings on behalf of all 141 UCC churches throughout Arkansas, Memphis, and Missouri, also lovingly known as the Missouri Mid-South Conference. As your conference minister, it is my honor to thank you for your contribution to our church's wider mission. In 2019, your contribution of $32,500 generously benefited and supported us as we supported the local churches throughout the Missouri Mid-South Conference. One of the specific ways that uh, your contribution has benefited the local churches Actually, it is in return, and you are receiving it right now, and that is in the search and call process. After Pastor Rocky um, resigned and took a new call ministry position um, in, uh, in Illinois, um, we immediately contacted and have been working with Pastor Lisa and with your committee to begin the search process for um, a, an interim associate conference minister and then um, a called associate conference minister. This is because of your generosity. Also because of your generosity, during these past few months, um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we in the conference staff have been able to provide weekly and sometimes daily resources to our pastors and members of our churches. Some of the resources that you may know about are the guidelines that uh, we put together for how to, um, at the beginning, uh, prepare for um, kind of closing the building and starting online. And then um, recently, uh, how to begin to consider reopening uh, the in-person uh, events and worship, including a phased reopening plan. Those are because of your generosity of our church's wider mission. But the things that you may not know about um, are that every week, every Tuesday, I have had a Zoom gathering with all of the pastors throughout the Missouri Mid-South Conference 
to support them, to see how they're doing in a pastoral way, but then also to offer space so the pastors can share resources and ideas together. I've also had a Zoom gathering for all of the chaplains of the Missouri Mid-South Conference. Those ministers who are chaplains in hospital settings, military settings, hospice settings, and other locations. And I've been able to do that because of you. They are another group that is literally on the front lines with the healthcare workers during this pandemic. And finally, every Thursday, our conference staff have been offering a Zoom webinar for ministers and members on a specific area and topic related to the pandemic. So um, recently I held one that talked about how do we reopen and what are some best practices that we can look at. We've had um, others where Cindy Berkner, your own Cindy Berkner, offered uh, resources for youth and young adults, um, as well as um, uh, Zoom webinars uh, that Jeremy Force and Nate Falk have offered from their uh, respective places of Camp Moval and Shenandoah Outdoor Ministry. This is all because of you, and so I want to say thank you for your generosity in this time. Thank you also for your generosity of leadership in Cindy Berkner. She is doing a phenomenal job as our youth ministry coordinator in the Missouri Mid-South Conference. She is gifted, she has a compassionate heart, and she is creative and has more energy than 10 people put together. So thank you, Cindy. And finally, thank you to Pastor Lisa. Our pastor and teacher, Reverend Dr. Lisa Martin, has done a phenomenal job of guiding you, St. John uh, United Church of Christ and St. Charles, through the process of um, moving from in-person worship and meetings to online and all that that entails. I will be the first to say that we ministers did not get a class on how to lead a church through a deadly pandemic, and Pastor Lisa has done a remarkable job and offering pastoral care to you, but also strength and leadership and guidance in this time as well. I thank you for the ways in which you are the hands, heart, mind, and soul of Christ in St. Charles and throughout God's beloved community. It is an honor to be in ministry with you this day and always. Thank you. Our final scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. When she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. 
about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds and he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them, and he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. Let us sing hymn number 574, I'm Going to Live So God Can Use Me. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this hour of worship. We give you thanks for the songs we have sung and the scriptures we have heard. May the words and the melodies sweep over us, transform us and make us into a new vessel as you see fit. Help us to claim and reclaim our discipleship in Jesus, to live out our commitment to Christ, no matter what the future holds. Keep us forever a holy community bound to Christ and through Christ to one another. And together 
we lift our voices in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, beloved, go in grace, go in peace, go in love. For you cannot go where God is not. For our final hymn, we're going to sing Song for the Nations, not a traditional patriotic song, but as we come upon our 4th of July holiday next week, it's a song that is fitting for who we are as a people. Let us sing verses 1, 3, and 4 together. before we depart. It has been a sad week in the life of St. John. We experienced the death of Dick Mueller, who is the husband of Shirley and the father of Lori Kruckeberg and Lynn Karbowski. Please keep them and their entire family in your prayers. And also the death of Mary Lou Burkhalter, Mary Lou's husband, the late Reverend Don Burkholter, was a pastor here at St. John. I believe he preceded Harv Cramey. And Mary Lou herself was a choir director here at church, as well as a school music teacher. Our sympathies are to her children, Barbara Schutte, Patricia Burkhalter, and Douglas Burkhalter. And sympathy also for Pam Ermeling and the death of her brother, Thomas Boschert. Our monthly memorial prayers will be held on July 13th rather than July 5th because I will be on vacation next week. Cindy Berkner has prepared worship for next Sunday and I think it's really exciting, so I hope that you will tune in. And while I am gone, Reverend Susan Shumway is on call for me in case of emergencies. Some of you will recognize Susan as she was a chaplain at St. Joe's Hospital until recently. You can contact the church office or anyone on staff if you have need of pastoral care, counseling. Um, we're still not doing much visitation because they won't let us in any place, but if you need a pastor, she is there and she is a very kind soul. 
Our big news here at St. John is that we are going to be holding worship outside on Saturday, July 18th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, it is still dangerous to meet in an enclosed space in a large group, but outside socially distanced gatherings are significantly safer. So details went out in the monthly messenger, but the long and short of it is that one, we need a lot of people to help us get this together. Um, it's, it's quite a bit of wor work to take the show on the road. So if you're willing to help, please let us know. And also, uh, we are asking you to sign up ahead of time, not to put a limit on people, but because it's a lot different to set up for 15 people than to set up for 50 people or set up for 75 people. So please let us know if you intend to come. Um, so you can call the church office, you can call or text any of us on staff, uh, send us an email, uh, just so we have a running total and have an idea of how many people to expect. But it's a great opportunity for us to see one another again and to worship in the same space together. Uh, Tuesday, there will still be a social hour uh, out, out by the cemetery. Uh, we've been meeting there for a couple weeks, and it tends to be nice and cool and shady in the evening. So invite you down there for a little bit of conversation and to remind you that the building is open for small group ministry. So if you have a small group that you would like to get together with again, or if you are not part of a small group, but you think now would be a nice time to be part of a Bible study, please let us know and we will get you set up. Go with God's grace and God's peace. Amen.